Hello, this is Kadoink. This is Vason. And uh, this is our first StarCraft II shoutcast ever. This seems to be a uh, Terran vs. Zerg matchup. Yeah, shall we go into it? We shall. Alright. Alright, let's get this started. Alright, so, we have in the bottom right-hand corner myself, Kadoink, the Terran player. Red. Dean. In fact. Red, yes. And then on the left, we have the blue Zerg. K-Q-Q-R. <laughs> Doesn't matter. Yeah, anyway. no, screw that. All right. Anyway, so this is on Taldarim Altars, uh, which a lot of people like to call Four Gate Altar. Um, Luckily, no one is Protoss in this case. Yeah. People will get Four Gated on this map. Indeed. Uh, and a Four Gate is a good strategy, so I don't know why people complain. Now, things are looking rather slow. Sorry about that. I had it on normal, and I should be on... Faster. Just faster. faster. Yeah. yeah. Even now it seems slow. Yeah. But, uh... It always seems slow when you're not playing yourself. It, yeah. it just does. Yeah. It's weird. This is weird. Uh, our first shout cast, I guess we'll have to get... Just used to the, the swing speed. of things. Yeah. 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 Why, why are they always red versus blue? Why can't they be better colors? Um... I don't know. Is it a play on red versus blue? No, I I don't know. I think it's been that way since beta. Yes, it has. And it'll probably continue to be that way. It's probably just convention, honestly. Convention. That's a good point. So we don't see too much coming from either player. I'm doing a regular barracks. Uh, barracks at 13. And the Zerg player hasn't built a pool. He hasn't expanded either. Uh... I'm scouting, and he's scouting. He seems to have found me first. Yeah. There's not really much action going on here. Uh, now, the Zerg did have enough minerals for another hatchery, but he instead put down a spawning pool. Yeah, a pool at uh, 13, it seems. seems or, I guess, 14. 14 uh, would be, yeah. Yeah. Um, I don't really know what good strategies there are for Zerg on Taldream Altars, seeing as I don't play Zerg. Um, I find that I like tank play because if you get in positions like this, you can set your tanks up by this watchtower, and they can't really get to you very easily. It's, it's They almost have to go air. Yeah, they almost have to go air, or uh, they have to be able to break this, which is really tough when you, know, you have a good amount of tanks. Yeah, definitely. Now, once again, the Zerg player has over 300 minerals and is still not using any. Yeah, 400 now. And he has no gas, which is really interesting. Yeah, this is the first time we see him uh, putting down an extractor, and he's building some zerglings right now and a queen, but his, he's floating a lot of minerals. Makes me think that he plans on taking expansion, but I don't know why he hasn't geared up to do that quite yet. And you can see uh, Kadoink here is scouting, so he knows what he has. Yeah, and uh, I have... I'm building two barracks, and as you can see... Uh, KQQR has not seen that. He only sees one barracks uh, and a refinery going up. So he doesn't even know if I'm going to get that second gas, and he obviously doesn't see this factory that I'm placing down right now. So he has no idea what to counter you with. No. Uh, he's going for the fast expand, which is a little can, bold. Can you really call it fast? It... Uh, yeah, it's, it's not really that fast considering uh, how delayed it was. And I don't think it's a very good choice because he has no idea what I'm going. He doesn't know if I'm going something that will... He should really scout before deciding what he yeah. should do. And I believe that uh, the Zergling is doing that. Hopefully it's going to my base and it's going to see things. Um, now, he should really just have stopped at that watchtower. Yeah, that's and a very then... good point. I don't know what I did there. Oh. We went backwards a little bit. I went backwards. Well... That's all right. Actually, I think we went forwards. We did. Well, nothing happened. No, nothing the, happened. The Zergling came to my base, and I shot him. I'm going to have to get used to the hotkeys. Yeah, that's all right. So you can see he has a good good little force of Zerglings coming in. I guess he's just protecting his expansion right now, um, which I guess is smart. But it still doesn't really know what you have. You just have a... I mean, for all he knows, you just have Marines. Yeah, he doesn't, uh, he doesn't at this point see that I have a factory, and he doesn't see the barracks either. And uh, the factory is indeed making a siege tank. With siege. With siege. Uh, and these marines are going to do excellent against these zerglings. Um, honestly, he should be thinking about getting either banelings or roaches, which he has the warren. 
sort of for him. Um, but at this point, we don't see any roses coming out from him. Which is really interesting, because he has plenty of gas to yeah. really put down some, some heavy support. He's not uh, spending any gas right now, any at all. And, in he just fact... Spent, he just spent some. What did he spend it on? Um, he spent it on... The lair, I believe. I, I think the yeah, lair costs he, gas. He costs 100, yeah. Okay, yeah, that's what he spent it on. And honestly, at this point, he should take guys out of gas if he's not even going to bother, bother spending gas. Yeah. You know? He's building another extractor, um, but he still isn't creating any roaches. He isn't creating a baneling nest. He did, however, get the upgrades for the wings. Yes. Which would uh, be a smart move if you were playing aggressively, I suppose. Yeah. Yeah, yeah indeed. Uh, Zergling speed is very aggressive. And it allows for you to do a lot of things, even while you're not attacking. Uh, as you can see right now, I'm pushing out with my Marines and Tanks. And see, I can just pop by this watchtower real quick. And if I saw something, I could stop right here and exactly. uh, siege up. But he doesn't see anything. He knows where he's at. So he's going to go ahead and uh, gonna go ahead and put his tanks in position here. Oh, no, that queen was caught off guard. Yeah, she tried to put a creep down and it didn't work. The servants are coming in, and they just get destroyed by the Marines. Poking with his queen, seeing it's not going to do any good. Spinecrawler is completely worthless at this point. Very. Oh, his first rush. Man. First rush popped out, came came a little too far. Uh, I'm going to poke up with my marine, see if I can pick anything off, like that roach or that queen. Uh, maybe a couple of zerglings. And it also allows me to put my tank up a little further. Zerg player trying to attack from behind the marines. Oh, he's got a little uh, zergling support, two queens and a roach. Yeah, that's the best thing you can do in this situation, yeah. just kind of pulling back, putting your units together, and trying to attack what is, What's good about this strategy is he doesn't get rid of the tank, yes, but he doesn't do much damage with the other siege tank. Yeah. Sure. It's part of the reason I split my tanks up, um, is that he can kind of only hit one area. This other one is, is kind of invulnerable uh, due to position. Yeah. And through that, I'm able to pick off that, and he doesn't have hope. It's an easy win. The man... Uh, the guy, I don't know, whatever he is. He, the problem with this game is that he just did not spend his minerals or gas efficiently. Yeah, no, he uh, was floating above 500 for a lot of the game, and probes, pylons, and below 500 are the three things you should think of while you're playing StarCraft II. Yep. Well, uh, this has been Kadoink. This is Vason. And I hope you enjoyed our first ever shoutcast for StarCraft II.